So during your growth phase, if it's a planned intentional action, there is going to be definite changes in your operational strategy. How do you operate the business? We're going to go through some examples. But during that growth phase, there's going to be changes. <clears throat> and I mentioned it earlier, um, similar to that EQ, if you remember, where you want to bring one area up like the base in the EQ, you've got to bring up all of the other parts as well to match that. Otherwise, you get a very distorted sound. Very similar in your business world, if you increase one phase, say recruiting, and this is one I've gone to several times already, and I know you're getting tired of hearing it, but it's the best analogy that you can think of right now. <clears throat> you recruit 100 agents in a week, there's going to be a whole bunch of problems that you now have that you may not have thought of, and you may have to change the operational strategy of the underlying business strategy that you have, all right? So with an effective operational strategy in line with your business plan and the growth phase, you can optimize all of these people and resources and processes and technology to make sure your business grows since you're in the growth phase, right? That's what you, how many in here are looking in the growth phase now? Right? I should have asked this question earlier because now I got people looking at each other going, yeah, I'm in the growth phase. Uh, did you know you were in the growth phase or did you just all of a sudden dawn on you in our conversation? Holy crap, I'm in the growth phase. All right. Should have asked that way back and then contrasted it with now and see how many people that go, I guess I didn't realize that. So if you're in that phase and you're intentionally in that phase, hopefully you've got this business plan that is set out your strategic method on which you're doing it. Your underlying operational strategy has to change. Let's look at some areas that I'm talking about. So if you are a sole proprietor, and I'm not going to ask you again, there were four or five out there that I saw that. <clears throat> and let's say as a sole proprietor, you are dealing with farms. Hey, you grew up on a farm, you know all the farm people around you, so you're specializing in farmland. Cool. You've got a strategy on how to do that. You understand it, you know what's going on, you know the players, you know all of this stuff that's happening. Now, you decide, I want to go in the growth phase. So your buddy, who has a license, says, dude, I really like you. I'll come work with you. However, they may have a different niche that you as a managing broker have either got to decide, dude, I better learn a little bit more about single family homes or tell that guy, Hey, you know what? I like you. We can go out and have beers together, but we're probably not going to be the agent because I can't really help you if you get in trouble. What about the earnest money? Your operational plan so far has been to take the check to the bank and deposit it. Well, now you've got an agent who is doing their own deals that are getting earnest money. Are you going to allow your agent to go put earnest money in your bank account? Or are you going to say you need to bring it to me and then I'll go put it in. So now I'm going to the bank twice as often because I've got you and me. Now multiply that by five to get your 10 agents. Are you going to start going to the bank eight and 10 times a day? Or is there another system that you've got to change your strategy on how you dealt with earnest money. When you were a sole proprietor and somebody called you up and said, hey, I want to talk to you about 123 Smith Street, it was your deal, right? Because you're the sole proprietor. Now you've got 10 agents. You've got an agent calling you up going, hey, I want to talk to you about Johnson Street. Uh, where's our earnest money? And you go, dude, I don't even know if we got that earnest money. I, 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 I don't know. Did 
Who are you working with? One of my agents? Now, did they put it in the bank? I, I, I have no record. Let me go to the bank and pull, uh, download my uh, account and, and, and I'll look. No, you've got to change a whole operational strategy. You may have to have a new accounting system that can track earnest money. How do you pay them? Are you going to write them a check and have them come by your office every day and say, okay, uh, bring me all your uh, closing stuff on Monday. Oh, and by the way, I can't be in because I'm going to go show houses. So I'll be in Tuesday. And now you've got an agent that got a closing on Monday, but it's not going to get paid till Friday or the next week because you're so darn busy and your operational strategy was never to have an office manager. But now you've got 10 agents, you may need an operations manager or a office manager because your underlying strategy of paying myself is very simple, is now different than paying 10 other people. The fact that the clientele profile may change when you penetrate a new market. Now that could be either geographical new market, that could be a topical new market. Well, once again, we'll go back to the, you're doing farmland and vacation, or no, I don't wanna say that. But, uh, farmland or hunting land, recreational property. Now you've got a guy that's doing condos. And now you've got a young lady working with you who specializes in golf court, cart. <laughs> uh, sorry, golf courses is the word of the day. Ding. Um, yeah, I just lost that entire. Let me look at my screen. What are we doing? Oh, the client profile may change. That cl client profile may change, may affect how you market. Your underlying operational strategy may change because your business plan marketing when it was just you was to deal with farmers. Now it's to get other clientele. So the growth phase could also af affect like the reporting hierarchy of agents. Maybe you've got 40 agents and now you've got five team leaders and you want the agents to talk to a team leader and then the team leader talks to you so that you're talking to five team leaders and not 50 agents because that would keep you busy all the time. So there is an operational change in so far as I've increased or included a new level of management. If you've got multiple offices that are geographically located in distinct areas, the Modulin Group, for instance, has an office on way up in South Bend and we have one in Evansville. So I've got a guy in Evansville who does sort of the answering of questions to all of the people in the Evansville office and one very similar analogous guy, but it's actually a young lady in South Bend. If they have issues, then they come to me. So now there's a change in the operational strategy in before when it was just me and three or four people, they could call me up or walk into my office. Now with 50 people or 45, whatever it is, there's a change in the way that we communicate to each other and that underlying operational strategy had to change. You've got new clientele, first time home buyers, maybe more younger, maybe technically more sophisticated than the comparable older buyer vacation home property. That's going to change your underlying operational strategy on how you target clients, how you market to them, how do you uh, communicate? Is it through uh, smoke signal? Is it through carrier pigeon? Is it through Twitter? I recently did a deal with a young man. Now, this guy was worked for Chicago Title. So it was the title rep, not the other agent, but he loved to direct message on Twitter. Yeah, so I got a lot of my communication from him through Twitter rather than even text messaging, which most of you sitting out there go, well, that text messaging is a fad. It's not going to last forever. We're going to go back to the email. <laughs> and some people are going to go, we're going to go back to writing letters. Well, I don't think so. All right. So there's an evolution in that technology and your clients are evolving 
you may have to evolve as well. All right. So change is growth. Growth is change. Learning to change is probably the hardest aspect of your business. However, if you want to be in that growth phase, you better learn to grow your operational strategy. And when I say grow, I mean change it. All right. Here's one last example. Even in your own self, you may want to say, I've got a goal to do 15 deals a year. I can handle 15 deals a year. However, I would like to grow and make more income. I'm going to target 150 deals next year. Do you think that's possible? Well, sure it is. All right. It can even be done by quote unquote one person. If you change your operational strategy, leverage technology, leverage people. All of a sudden, you may now have a closing transaction coordinator. You may have a phone person that just talks on the phone for you. You may have a buyer's agent, which deals strictly with buyers, but it was an actual change in your operational strategy on how that came about. So just remember that while your business plan changes, your operational strategy must change as well. And I go back to the whole uh, parametric equalizer where base comes up, the trouble's got to come up, you know, all the other stuff has got to come up as you move up if you want to increase the entire thing. So put that into some thought, get another cup of coffee, we're going to come right back.